So last night I uh, slept at this truck stop in Northern California and I really didn't get the best night's sleep because my bed felt a little more crowded than it usually does and I just really can't figure out why. So last night after Morning. I picked up after I picked her up at the airport uh, what two days ago we drove up here to Northern California and slept at a truck stop last night so beautiful first night in the van and we got here super late last night because we are currently on our way from Southern California up to Northern California because we have a marathon whatever that we're gonna be running tomorrow so we have got to get to the campsite tonight but right, we ran into the gas station real quick got some coffee she got nice coffee and then some grapes for breakfast I'm trying to keep it pretty light today for the marathon all right so i just had to actually run inside and use the uh bathroom while i was in there and while i toasted up some sourdough bread making some breakfast got herself changed and then once she's done we're gonna be hitting the road towards yosemite so i um Stop by my brother's house for uh, a little while to drop off a bunch of stuff and kind of get the van organized. I also picked up a few things. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I actually got some Starlink and the Milepost book so that I'm ready to go to Alaska when that time comes because I'm kind of starting to move my way back over in that direction. But first things first, before we leave the gas station, they actually have a uh, water fill up spot here and my tank is on completely E, so we're gonna go fill that up. All right, so just kidding. We were driving around and I couldn't find anything that was labeled as potable water. There were some spigots, but they were red handles. So we're going to a campground tonight anyway, so we're gonna be able to fill up there. So I'm not too worried about it. But before we can head over to the campsite, we gotta stop by the grocery store, pick up some dinner tonight so we can carbo load before we gotta run 13 miles tomorrow. Back to the motherland. Let's go. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been doing some slight preparations for this half marathon. This is my first marathon or half marathon I've ever run. She has run a half marathon before, so she has a little right. bit more experience. So we're gonna get some stuff in Walmart for carbo loading tonight and maybe pick up some gels or whatever. I don't even know what the process is for running a marathon, so we're just gonna kind of see and grab what we can. We're both also kind of uh, ultra competitive, so we're gonna see who can who can win the race tomorrow, but I'm also a realist, and she's a better runner than I am, so I don't have very high hopes that I'm gonna win. So I'm gonna be the chef for the night, and she's gonna be the resident dietitian since she just finished her internship, and she is one step closer to being a registered dietitian, so. Okay, what kind of pasta do you want? Penne? You pick. It's good. Yeah, let's get rotini. Let's rotini. And I think we're gonna do a uh, penne alla vodka with some chicken on the side and bacon. Beautiful. All right, so we decided to do some bigger grocery shopping. She picked out some stuff for the week, but now we are in the running aisle, looking at all of the different caffeine energy chews they have. And I think we're just gonna buy up a bunch of these in preparation for the race. Which one do you want? I think I might get these energy chews. Blocks. And just like keep them in. Oh, I need a fanny pack too. Tell me this would look dope. Water on demand, just, it's got everything I need. Little pouch for gummies, another pouch for gummies. Backpack for stuff. We're gonna get this. This is gonna be a race backpack. All right, I also need to uh, get some tape for my nipples. Here. All right, so I'm just gonna get this. For your nippies. So that I don't end up like Michael Scott from that scene from The Office. All right, I think we've got everything we need. Ready to go? Perfect. All right, so Noelle's getting everything organized because she wanted to and is much more organized than I am. And then we've got about two hour drive up to just outside of the Yosemite Valley in 
Bass Lake, which is where the marathon is. All right, van is all packed up. Got my energy shoes, got my backpack, got my tape. She's got everything all organized better than I can, so. It's time to hit the road. So we've made it to the uh, spot where we pick up our bibs. Looks like there's a lot of people here. Oh god. Oh my god, it's so muddy. It's a little muddy out here. All right, let's go pick up our bibs. Who's excited? Me! Woo! All right, so the uh, first spot that we were in was a giant mud pit, so I pulled down the road into the overflow parking lot so we don't have to get out and have muddy feet. But this is the spot where we're gonna be racing. So that's Bass Lake right there. And we're essentially running all the way around it. This is the finish line, but it is a beautiful area. Mountains in the distance, it's kind of foggy right now, but you can kind of see the lake through it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we've got our race t-shirts that we'll wear tomorrow, I guess under clothes, because it's gonna be freezing cold. We got our numbers, and then we got these like little reusable cups because they're trying to reduce waste. So clip this onto my waist or something. All right, so there wasn't really much going on up there, but we got all our stuff. And right there is where we're gonna be finishing tomorrow. I think now we're just gonna head back and uh, go find and pull into our campground for the night, make some dinner. Oh gosh. Trying to keep the mud off the floor in the back. Didn't really do too well. All right, onward to the campground. Hi. Hello. Just checking in. Lassie. Tumi, T-W-O. All right, so she said checkout is at 10 a.m. and they're pretty strict about it, but she said she'd give me till 11, so. We have to be back here by 11 because there's nowhere else to park. All right, so I think there's a shuttle that's gonna take us back here tomorrow morning after the race, but our spot is right at that blue spot. So we're kind of right next to the bathrooms and stuff, which is nice. And it's always good pulling into a campground because then I can plug the van in, get it charged up. We can use the AC or the heat if we need to, probably the heat tonight because it's supposed to get down to like 35, but it won't be too bad. And then we can actually walk to the start line from our campsite, which is nice. The only thing that kind of sucks is this campsite was like the most expensive campsite I've ever stayed at. It's $110 a night, so it's a little pricey, but. All right, so it took us a while to find it, but we finally got it. It's back in here. Sucks the weather's so crappy. So we've got our electric hookups and we've got our water. So there we go, let's get hooked up. So you guys will be happy to know that I did clean out the back of the van so it's all organized nothing should fall out there we go look at that so much prettier back here but i don't have a city connection technically in the van all i do in terms of water hookup is just fill my tank and then i'm good to go i can't leave it connected overnight or anything like that now we wait for that to fill up i'm gonna hook up my electric as well. Actually, I'm just now realizing that I cannot hook up to electric because all I have is a extension cord. I need to get a uh, 30 amp adapter or something, but they don't have just a regular wall outlet in here. So I guess we won't be using the electric. Kind of sucks, but it doesn't really matter. So it kind of sucks. We had to pay $110 for a place to park and fill up the water tank. Two things which I usually get for free, but at least we're close to the starting line. So at least we don't have to take a shuttle over there in the morning so i guess it's kind of worth it but anyways i'm gonna get started making some dinner all right so noelle's up in the bed snacking because there's not a lot of room down here for two people to be cooking also another thing that i did in the last few days was i fixed this countertop and this will probably make a lot of people happy so now it's level so if you've been watching my videos for a while it's been like an inch down for the last two years and the other day i had some time so i figured why not um it was getting a little bit loose so i tightened it up and also made it so now 
the countertop is all flush, so that's nice. So I think um, we're keeping it pretty simple tonight. We're just gonna do some panela vodka with chicken, but I also got some thick cut bacon to throw in there. And figured this is the perfect time to thank this video's sponsor, which is Sierra. And I've got a lot of comments on my videos asking, how do I keep the smell out of the van? How do I keep it from stinking up and clogging my vent fan like that? And honestly, I haven't had an answer until now. So essentially what this thing is, is a portable range hood and it's made out of environmentally friendly uh, ABS plastic. And it looks super sleek and it actually matches the design of the van so it works out perfectly. And essentially you just plug it in, angle it at whatever you're cooking on and it turns on a vacuum on the inside and sucks all of the grease and grime into this little catcher right here. And it has a, a three stage filter on the front here to keep it clean and running nice. So I'm excited to try it out and see how well it handles one of the greasiest food items in the world, bacon. So we've got it plugged in, turn it on, we'll power up and hopefully suck all that grease away. All right, so I'm actually impressed with how powerful this thing is. It's sucking all that greasy air right up through there and it's blowing out so much from the back end. All right, so I think the bacon's just about done. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing off. Pull these out of here. Nice and crispy. All right, so I got rid of the uh, bacon grease. I poured it in the sink right there. And if you're interested in this product or you think it looks cool if you live in a van or an RV or you do camping trips and you don't want your area to smell and maybe you don't have a uh, full range hood like I don't, you can check out the link in my description to get your early bird promo code. And you can also explore more about how Sierra is making efforts in their sustainable mission. So go check them out at the link in my bio. All right, so I've made the decision. I don't feel like cooking chicken, so I'm just gonna kind of make a penny a la vodka bolognese with some ground turkey. Also, I have a love-hate relationship with these kind of turkey tubes because they're nice and compact, so they fit in the fridge and the freezer really well, but they look disgusting. Coming out. While I was waiting for the water to boil, I figured I wanted to try on all my running gear. Because I've never worn it before, so I got my... No one's laughing at me. I got my handy dandy armband. Fits on there good. Got my backpack. Dual water storage. And a little pouch in the back so I can hold stuff if I need to. And I'll put my gummies in here. My little portable cup in here. I think I look cool. No one doesn't... Way. No one doesn't think so. That's not true. You look yes, good. it is. She was laughing at me. But I think I can take all this off. I don't know if I'm going to wear this armband. I feel like it just screams novice. Also, for those of you guys wondering, Noelle has been hard at work in the bed over there making our marathon playlist, so thank you for the help. That drained. Now we can add some mozzarella, a little bit of parmesan, parmesan. and then some basil. All right, dinner is served. You okay? <laughs> nice little dinner for two. This table really isn't built for two people, but we can make it work. What do you think? Good? Delicious. Anyways, we're probably just gonna finish this dinner, get the van all cleaned up, make sure we got everything ready for the race tomorrow, and then go to bed. So I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It is 5 a.m. I am freezing cold. Wow. No, I still haven't gotten up yet, but I'm gonna get myself changed into all of my running gear and then we're gonna head out there. So I have opted for not wearing the armband and I think I'm just gonna wear this backpack and keep my phone stuffed in there so I don't have to deal with it. But um, we also realized last night that the uh, tape that we bought at Walmart is not sticky. So luckily I had some band-aids left over. So hopefully these hold up, but don't know if they will. My nipples are going to be hard as diamonds. Oh my god, my nipples are already hard as a rock. <laughs> also, Noel's sister and uh, her friends are running the race as well, so they're coming over here to warm up in the van, so I got it turned on for them. Woo! Come on, get up, Noel. Hey! Hello! Good morning. But also, my diesel heater broke, so I can't use it. 
well it didn't break but the uh, fuel line broke so I can't use it so I got the uh, van heat going on full blast warming us up and it feels actually so nice finally starting to warm up all right so for breakfast we're having bagels yeah There's a bunch of people here now breakfast with champions How's your bagel? Good. All right, it is time to walk over. So it's still pretty dark out, so you can't see us, but we're walking over. That's Gretchen, Noel's sister, and then all of her friends. They're running, they're running the marathon with us. You can't really see them because it's dark. Half marathon. They always make me clarify. Anyways, we got about a 10 minute walk up to the start line and then we're racing. And I figured I would just check in with you guys every mile to two miles. Let you know how I'm feeling as we race. So, also, I don't have a goal for time. What's your time? Goal? Three hours. Three hours? Okay. My only goal is to not break my running cadence. So, we'll see how that goes. So, all these people have been standing here since 4.30 a.m. because that's when the shuttle came. We woke up at 5 and walked over. There's a lot of people here. This is it. This is the start line. And it's also a spectator free race, which is actually pretty good. So, no one is going to see me walking when I walk. Woo! Van man more like running man. Five minutes till race time, how you feeling? Woo! <laughs> Here we go. Woo! Mile zero. Feeling good. No one else excited. Check in again. Maybe at mile one, maybe later. Beautiful. All right, so we just passed mile marker two back there. Definitely feeling it, but feeling a little bit better than I thought I would. So overall, good so far. All right, aid station number one, water. So that's mile 2.75. Stop at the first aid station, got some water. And I'll probably eat a gummy here soon, but still feeling pretty good. All right, so we're just passing mile three right here. Not sure what my overall time is because I started my clock a bit early, but I restarted at mile two and got to mile three pretty much exactly in 10 minutes. So we're doing pretty well on our average 10 minute pace that, we're, that was our goal. Realistically, I think I'm gonna hit 12, but we're shooting for 10. I'm also not sure where Noel is. I think she stopped at the aid station. Never mind. Noelle's actually in front of me. She's right up there. She must have snuck past me. I didn't even see her. All right, we're coming past aid station two. Not really sure what the mile marker is, but we're gonna skip this one. All right. Whew. We just had a uh, pretty large uphill section. We're at mile like 4.3. Definitely feeling it now. I am tired. Oh. A little bit of a traffic jam here around mile five. Got pretty muddy. All right, we're at mile 5.5. .5, average pace of 11 minutes, 20 seconds. Taking our first walking break. Recuperate some of that energy. Feeling a lot better than I did at mile four, surprisingly, but still feeling it. The course has also been like kind of run down to one, two running lanes. And even these are kind of muddy, but in the middle, it's like a, mud pit all right we're at the next aid station i think i'm gonna get some gatorade at this one good job almost done with the mud i also have bananas and other stuff but i hate bananas also that aid station was the halfway marker so halfway there past the super difficult uphill section or at least Super difficult for me. It's been mostly downhill since then, so feeling way better at mile six and a half than I did. All right, so I don't remember what I was saying before. I got cut off there, my camera died, but just past mile eight, a little bit more uphill, but so far feeling good. We haven't broke our running cadence that much, maybe two or three times, and one of those times because there was a traffic jam in the mud. All right, mile 10. Three more to go. I took a gel from the last uh, 
aid station, so we're gonna take that. It's actually not that bad. I think my average mile pace is 12 minutes. I don't know if you can see them up there. But those guys in the yellow, they are the two hour and 45 minute pacers. So that's what we're on pace for right now. Two hours, 45 minutes. All right, so we just passed mile marker 12 right there. We're feeling pretty good right now. I mean, I walked a good amount after mile 10, but I'm gonna try to keep a, at least a light jog for this last mile and get to 13. Such a beautiful race to run. And it's only like 30 minutes from Yosemite, so I might head into there after the race is over too. There's the finish line. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right there. It's probably about three fourths of a mile away. So close. I'm so ready to be done. Here we go. It's like Noel beat me. Uh, what was your time, you know? 2.27. I have no idea what mine is. Why is always chocolate milk? I hate chocolate. Oh, there's chocolate milk. Where's the water? So everyone is finished. The metal looks pretty cool. But. So overall, it was uh, definitely a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, definitely have a new respect for running. I used to think I could run a marathon with no training and I think a half marathon might be just about my max. My legs feel like jello, my ankles hurt worse than they've ever hurt my entire life, but there you go, it's definitely doable to run a half marathon with no training. Now that we're done, we got our little swag boxes, I got a coffee, an old sister and their friends who are taking a picture right there, got an Airbnb right nearby. And they have a hot tub and a bunch of places where we can hang out, so we're gonna head back there, jump in the hot tub, and kind of recover from the marathon. And then we might head into Yosemite tomorrow. So I appreciate you guys coming with me on this journey. I know I've been talking about it for a while. Pretty happy to have completed it, but I definitely don't think I will be doing another one just because I don't really like running, but glad to say I did it once. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video and you haven't already, please think about subscribing. It really does help out the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.